you think about storage, you may think of a hard drive. And that hard drive could be anything from in your computer to, you know, on your desktop to a SAN, NAS, server, wherever it may be, even in the cloud. But really what it comes down to is persistent storage. It's storage that needs to be saved, not like RAM or memory where, you know, you shut down your computer and everything that was stored in your RAM is then just erased and refreshed. And when you bring up your computer again, it's like it didn't even exist. So when we're thinking about storage, in this case, or hard drives, we're thinking about persistent data. And that's exactly what volumes are. So volumes are a way to have persistent data, persistent storage for your Docker containers. So in this video and the blog post that goes along with this video, we're gonna be talking about how to create volumes, how to attach those volumes to containers, and then how to create a container and a volume at the same time to save yourself a little bit of time. <laughs> so with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna use the docker volume command with the create flag, and we're just gonna name it test volume. All right, and as we can see, that was created pretty straightforward. We'll do a docker volume ls, right? And don't worry about all of these here. These are just other volumes that I have but we can see our new volume that was created right here and the driver is local we're going to be talking about that in a little bit but just keep that in mind it's something important here so now at this point what we can do is we can do a docker volume inspect test volume all right and as you can see here we just get some metadata output so when it was created the driver that was used again Keep that in mind we're going to be talking about that in a little bit labels the actual mount point name etc so it's pretty straightforward to create a volume and list it and kind of see what exactly it's doing and that volume is created but it's not connected to a container and we can create a volume that's not connected to, to a container the problem is well not a problem but the reality is is that if you're creating volume you most likely want it connected to a container so how can we do that well we can use our trusty docker run command our TID for our TTY console or interactive and our detach. And then we specify the V flag or the volume flag. And then I can say test volume. And then we'll go ahead and we'll give our container a name, my Ubuntu container, and we'll use the Nginx container image just as an example. So now at this point, if I clear my screen and I run Docker container LS, we now have our container right here. And what I'll do is I'll run docker container inspect and if I scroll up just a little bit we're going to see some output for mounts and then within mounts we can see our test volume so pretty easy pretty straightforward right this is a way easier scenario than going you know getting in the car and running to your local micro center or best buy or whatever picking up a hard drive driving all the way home popping it in your computer or your server and you're you're on your way this is a little bit easier than that. <laughs> so getting started with you know your hard drive, which is your volume in containers, is pretty straightforward as long as you have the storage available. So here's the thing though. We created a volume and then we attach it to our container. What about if we kind of want to do that all at the same time? Well, if I go ahead and if I scroll down here a little bit, we're going to see this command. And it's the same exact command. It's a docker run, our TID flag, except now, instead of using the V or the volume flag, we're going to use the mount flag. The source, we can name it whatever we want. So my vol or my vol2, whatever you'd like. And then a comma, and we're going to specify the target. So the path, where it's going inside of the container. All right, so we'll do slash app as the path. And then again, name my Ubuntu container two, since we already have one called my Ubuntu container. And we'll give it the Nginx container image. And then if we run a Docker container LS, we can see right here, we have our new container ID. We'll run a Docker container inspect again. And if we scroll up to our mount section, we can now see the source for the volume, the destination, the driver, etc. So same thing essentially, but the biggest difference is that 
we're creating the volume and creating the container at the same time. And we saw before that that volume didn't exist, but if we run Docker volume LS, we now see if I scroll up my vol right here, we can see that it now exists just as a standard volume, but it's attached directly to the container. Now, here's another thing that we need to keep in mind, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move over to a web browser in a second to show this, but notice here how the driver, it says local. What does that mean? Well, local means it's using storage from your local computer. Now, what does that mean? I'm on a Mac right now. I'm running these containers on my Mac, which means these volumes are getting utilized on my Mac, which is fine for testing purposes, which is, you know, what this whole series is about, what we're doing. We're learning containers for infrastructure, but in the real world, here's the thing. You're not going to want to keep that volume local because you know, what if other containers need to use it? What if containers that are deployed in other places need to use it? What if your computer dies? You never want to run anything production level, you know, as an application piece on your computer, right? So you want to run that somewhere else. You want to run that volume somewhere else. Now, what does that mean? Well, we have something called storage drivers. Now, in a lot of cases, storage drivers are essentially used to think about your container images and how they're created via layers. But in this case, we're talking about shared storage systems. So let's head over to a web browser really quick. I just wanna show you something. So this is just an example here to kind of showcase what I'm referring to. Now, if you don't use AWS, it's fine. You know, think of the same thing for your SAN or your NAS or Azure or GCP or wherever you're running. But I simply just Googled Docker volume AWS. And if I click on this, this is talking about ECS, so we don't really care all that much, but Point being is this is utilizing Docker volumes in AWS for EBS. So EBS is, you know, like a hard drive in the cloud essentially. And Docker volumes are using that for the persistent storage. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for Azure. Well, as you can see here, we have a something else that we can create persistent volumes on Azure file storage. So this is a type of you know, cloud or virtual storage or whatever you'd like to call it inside of Azure. And if I wanted to, I could have a volume that mounts to Azure file storage. Let's even look at it in another way. Let's say Docker volume SAN. And if I click on this plugins right here and I click on plugin documentation and I scroll down, we can see the full list of volume plugins. So we have Azure, we have Convoy, we have DigitalOcean, we have GCP in here, we have NetApp in here, we have VMware in here. So you can, you know, if you have a container that you need a uh, volume for in your VMware environment, you can go ahead and you can do that too. So point being, there are a lot of pieces here that you can use to satisfy your persistent storage via container volumes method whether you're running in the cloud, whether you're running on-prem, there's usually a plugin for it. And with that, that's gonna wrap up our storage on Containers for Infrastructure Pros. Thank you so much for watching, really appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next video.